Welcome to a new Unreal Engine video, and um, I've been developing something for a game jam that I'm taking place in, or taking part in, uh, and I wanted to make a grappling system, grappling hook basically. Um, so, and you guys seem to really like that cable tutorial, or like the how-to video on the last one, so I figured I'd uh, just chime in and show you how to do a grappling hook. And it's fairly simple actually. Um, so Unreal has this built-in uh, cable actor. So just um, create a child class here. I named it Grapple Hook because that's basically what it is. And it's just a grappling hook. And so now in our component, we have a bunch of variables. A lot of these should actually look familiar if you've um, if you've been following along here. We have like our first-person character. We get it on the begin play through the interface. We have our cable component class like we had in the last one. We have a distance, so this is your distance for your line trace, because what we're going to be doing is off of the begin play, you save your character, and then on the E key press, what we'll do is we'll check to see if our grappling hook is valid. If it's valid, we'll destroy it before recreating it. But basically, we go through, we grab the first person camera, we do a simple line trace for objects, we filter out some objects along the line trace, and we check. And here is where we're doing something a little slightly different off of a traditional line trace is we're going to get the impact point and we're going to spawn that grapple hook class so this cable uh, class at that location and then we're just going to promote that to the variable we're going to off of that we'll grab the cable component so this here and we will just set attach end and we'll attach it to ourselves. so basically what this is doing is it's spawning the actor at that impact point and setting its end location to our bp grapple component which is going to be attached to our character. So basically, it's kind of like, you know, you're throwing out the grappling hook, it attaches to the wall, and then you're basically taking the string and attaching it to yourself. That's what that's basically doing. And then we have our traditional set timer by event, and basically this has your update time, which is here for right now. I think this is, no, that's the total time. We have the update time is 0 0.01, like usual. We have this grapple strength, which is basically how much you're going to pull along. And I have this set to 5. Play around with these values, how you feel. Um, so yeah, so on the update, so this timer update will run, right? Our grapple will set our movement mode to flying, because that's basically the only way to move in the Z direction. If you're um, going from walking to flying, you, it's the only way to move in the Z direction. So if you want to walk up ladders, this is how you would do it too. You can just do a simple... You just swap over to flying. But yeah, so then we calculate the total time that has elapsed here. So we'll take our total time, and then we'll add our update time. So this update time gets added to the total time. And we check to see, has it been longer than one second? If it's been longer than one second, uh, we will clear out that time. We will clear the handle. We'll reset the movement mode to falling, because we want the animations and everything to update. And then we'll just reset the grappling hook. If it's valid, we'll just destroy it. If it's not, then who cares? But yeah, so if we are under this one second and we want to update it, then we simply just update it. So what we do here is we take the impact point, we get this, we'll get a unit direction vector. So that's basically like um, a really tiny vector. It's like the... It's a unit vector. I mean, if you're not familiar with unit vectors, I would uh, look them up. But uh, yeah, so we negate that because we want to pull towards the fact we want to pull towards the location, the impact point, right? So that's where the grappling strength comes in, and this is how. And then we just multiply it because unit vectors are really nice in the fact that if you do a multiply, because it's the unit vectors, um, basically like your forward vector and stuff here. Forward vectors, unit vector. Um, that's why we can get away with multiplying it, and that's how you figure out your like line traces and stuff. So this is doing the same thing, but instead you're pulling it towards this um, location, and of course we're just taking the first person character and we're adding a world offset to it, and that's pretty much it. So you have the you have a line trace that gets fired, you spawn the actor, you set up the cable, right? You set up the cable, and then you set up the timer to pull the player towards that location uh, for at least one second. That's basically it. That's all we're doing here. That's the entire component. And the component goes on the, uh, on the player character here. So this is a player character on the grapple. I have it here under the camera. So, And then it's kind of just like right in the middle. 
That's how it is. And then, yeah, so the results of that are now, when we press E, I do have the debug stuff on, and it'll pull us towards, like, the location. Of course, it's a little weird if you, like, jump in the air, it'll, like, start clipping for a bit, um, and especially up against walls. But, uh, that's just a little bit of, it's just a little bit of fine-tuning on the variables. It's also, you can also kind of go the reverse. You can kind of go, like, I don't know, what is it, the scorpion, get over here, um, if you wanted to. Um, instead of pulling me, uh, just pull whatever you're attached to, and you have whatever you're attached to. So it, instead of the setting the offset on the on the player character, is just set up whatever you're attached to um, things. So yeah, I hope you found that helpful, and I hope you can use it in one of your games.